you about the game day with Fox, with these guys here. It's a, kind of an interesting experience. Well, I think that, um, I think it, one, speaks volumes to our conference, uh, to the Pac-12 and their commitment to our TV deal that we signed and getting our conference the exposure, which I think we, we ultimately deserve, and not, not just us, but the entire conference. And um, for Fox to want to come out and have their game day show here and uh, to get their number one crew here uh, for our Pac-12 opener is a big deal. You know, it's exciting. It, I know it's you've been talking about the process and you want to play everything the same, but human nature would think that this kind of amps the stakes up maybe a little bit, Pac-12 opener. Well, it, it does. It does, and it can, you know, and I, I think that that's the natural emotions of human nature. You know, I think our fans will be revved up even more. Um, I, I'm sure our players are going to be excited to play, you know, but the process in which we prepare for that moment hasn't changed, you know, from – Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, till we just finished up right now. We haven't changed a thing in our preparation, and that's what's key in all of this. And uh, I, I'm not, I'm not naive to think that we aren't going to be fired up to play, and like we weren't, you know, the, the first game or the second or third. I, I get it. We're, we're going to be excited. Um, I'm sure Arizona's excited to come play up here, but the preparation and that process is what's been critical and key for me. And I, and I think our guys did a great job of understanding that this week. Um, they were they were really focused. I just got done telling them that, that how proud I was of their ability to remain focused with school starting, Pac-12 opener, um, and we practiced really well and really hard. And so you know we're, we're not done yet. You know we, we we've got a, got about 48 hours still here to go. But all in all, I'm proud of the way they prepared. Secretly hoping for a little rain, maybe given the forecast. I don't know. It, we're in Seattle. <laughs> I mean, I don't, shoot, who knows, man? It, it could rain. It could be sunny. It was supposed to rain last week, and it was probably the nicest day we've had in a couple of weeks. So, what? Well, it doesn't matter. Was it, was there an aha uh -huh moment, Steve, where these guys realized that the way you were going about things this year was, oh, this is going to work. We're going to win games. We're going to whether it's the offense, the preparation. I think we've had multiple of those moments. You know, Greg. I think that. Yeah, we were all in anticipation in the first game of what was this going to look like, you know, especially offensively. Um, and we came out of the game, and it was like, okay, th this can work if we do it the right way. And then it was, okay, now we have to go on the road uh, and apply it on the road, which we had, we've had we been struggling at doing here in the last couple of years. And, and then for the game to get tight and then for our guys to finish the way we did, I think that was another aha moment that, hey, we can do this. We can rebound even when the game starts going in another direction that we can refocus and, and recontrol the ball game. And then I really think last week there was an aha moment for a lot of young kids on our roster that had to go in and play. Um, and some of them played really well, like, hey, I can do this. Some of them, they might have had an aha moment in the middle of, wait, this is a little bit more difficult than I thought, and then picked it back up and got going. So we consistently get those moments, and the key is to, to understand what those moments really mean um, and then build upon them so that when we are faced in a, in a similar type situation, we don't need to have another aha moment. We can go back and, and lean on the one that we've already had previously, and I, I think we're, we'll be able to do that here Saturday. On Monday, you talked about one of those young guys, John Ross. Uh, how much are you still working with him? Obviously a lot, but seems like a delicate balance with the guy who sure. can be so explosive and yet you want him to be smart about things right. too. Is the, are there signs? I think there's a, I think that's such a fine line, you know, Adam, you're, you're exactly right in that this guy did so much in training camp and just kind of wowed everybody that I think everybody's kind of on our own sidelines, you know, it's, he gets the ball, even the guys that are sitting on the bench on defense, they kind of stand up and they start looking at the screen like, uh oh, is it going to be this one? And that's a hard way to play as a player, like that I have to make the big play every time. So we're trying to tone him down a little bit and not, not take away his stinger, you know, but, but that hey, those big plays are going to come. Just like last week, he would, who would have ever known we would have thrown a bubble screen to him and he'd go 60 yards for a touchdown and making three guys miss. So uh, we're just trying to allow him to understand letting the game come to him and not to try to manufacture those big plays like we saw on the punt return last week. So uh, it's a fine line with him um, because he is a dynamic player and that's what makes him unique. So we're just trying to coach him through it. How okay. How is Eric Kohler coming along? He's Tuesday. come along. He's come along. Um, Eric worked, uh, has been on the field practicing and working, which is, which is a positive thing. Uh, I don't think by any means he's in game shape ready, but but he is back on the field practicing and working, which is encouraging. And you talked a lot about Kevin yesterday. And mm -hmm. With him as, as also the other kick returner, are you seeing kind of him getting back to the explosive guy that he was back in that game? Oh, I think Kevin is fantastic. I mean, I, she's I, – 
I hope they kick it to him. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's a he's a dynamic returner. Um, he uh, he's a great off returner, and that's what makes him unique. When he's back there, if the ball doesn't come to him, he's a tremendous lead blocker for our, for our other returners. Um, he's just doing it all. He, he had a great practice again today. It's just you almost can take him for granted now. The energy he brings every day and the work ethic, and um, I think uh, he's just been. He's been fun to coach here this year, really a lot of fun to watch a guy mature and, and understand the value of every day as a senior when he goes out to practice. Do you really get the sense that they're, that one's coming here at some point, just the way they know. practice and the, their explosiveness? We're, we're working at it. We keep working at it. You know, And I think so much is placed on what the returners are doing. You know, Where, where our big improvement has come and, and I think continues to need to come along, especially on game day, is our blocking and how we're blocking for those guys. It, you know, you can have the most dynamic guy back to return, but if one guy misses that block, it makes it a lot harder on the returner. So we've been focusing on that. Um, you know, I, I'd like to, I like to get some. You know, I don't know if we're ever going to take one back for a touchdown. That, that's not the goal. The goal is to change the field position, get our office good field position, so that it's a little bit of a shorter field to, to go down and score. Where are you on peeling some starters off special teams and trying to incorporate them? Well, we're just trying to play the best guys in every scenario, you know, and, and that's the, again, that's a, the, a balancing act that has to take place of, you know, how many, how many special teams does Princeton Fuimuano on to go along with all the snaps he's getting on defense. And so with every player on our roster, we, we monitor every snap they, they play in practice, every snap they play on game day, um, and try to find the right balance in there so that we're not overusing guys but yet our best players for that moment are on the field for whether that's offense, defense, or special teams. And um, so far, so good, you know, and those young guys pushing their way through, which is great because the more they can get in there, that can reduce some of the reps for our starters on offense or defense and um, as well as on offense and defense. You know, Kevin King is really playing well, and if he can get in and spell Schamberg or Sean Parker, that's beneficial to us, and that keeps those guys on kickoff, kickoff coverage so that we can pin the ball deep. Those are as big as plays of any because, uh, you know, we, we don't think about it. If, if you tackle a guy on the 15-yard line on a kickoff, that's great. If they return it to the 30, that's a 15-yard completion if we were on defense. So that tackle is just as important as that first play on defense. So um, there, there's, a, there's a real balancing act there. We've seen a lot of discussion about the NCAA and its future and how things might be handled down the road. What did you think of the organization when you were a player, and has your perception and understanding of it changed now as a coach? You know, I didn't really even know. What, I don't know if, you, if I knew then what the NCAA stood for, quite honestly. <laughs> um, I, I was just trying to focus on getting a degree and playing football and having fun. And, um, you know, at, the, at that time when I was a player, it was the Bowl Alliance. Um, and I felt like we got jobbed when I was at BYU. We were number five in the country and finished the regular season 13-1 and one and didn't get to go to a B an Alliance Bowl, which thus became the BCS. So um, that's what I thought of them at the time. You know, I didn't, I didn't think much about the other stuff, you know. I didn't think about getting paid or, or it, agents. I mean, they didn't want a short, fat, white kid, so they weren't <laughs> recruiting me anyway, you know. So um, I... I I don't know, quite honestly. Now today, I think they have a they have a really really hard job to do. I mean, it is tough to manage all that's going on and and what social media has brought to our society, and how fast things travel, um, and and the fine line and how do you penalize teams or people or coaches? Um, I think it's just really really hard thing to do. And and they and the hard part is is they don't really have jurisdiction over people, you know. So it's not like they're the they're the they're the law where they can go gather information from anybody. All they can get it from is the university itself, you know. And so, I, I just they're in a really hard place when it comes to policing the issues. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't envy their job by any means. Do you do you think that there's any momentum for players to kind of organize themselves and do something and no, take they a don't, stand? No, these guys don't just, know what they're doing. They don't. I, when I was 18, 19, geez, I didn't have a clue how the world worked. You know, I was just trying to get to class and get to meetings on time and um, you know I, I, I don't at least not our guys if you ask them I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sarka what has been kind of your position on, on your guys kind of handling Twitter and Facebook and, and how do you feel like they have approached it and dealt with it? Oh well, our guys the majority of our players if not all of them have Twitter and Facebook accounts. Um, I'm friends with the majority of them um, which I encourage them to be friends with me if if, if you don't want to be a friend with me, then you're probably putting stuff on there that you wouldn't want me to see or want your mom to see. And 
um, you know, I, I try to educate these guys on real life scenarios, you know, so that when they walk out of here, they can operate in the world and be competitive in the world and, and not that I, I feel like if I have to shelter them now, then what good am I doing them when they move on in the real world? So I try to educate them. Um, we don't talk about Husky football. We don't talk about the things within, within our organization. But if they want to have an account and they want to have friends and friendships and post the things that go on in their lives, hey, that, that's what life is today, you know, and that's what's going on around them. So um, I just try to educate them. And uh, if they don't befriend me, then I question, well, what's going on? Why, why would you not want to be my friend? Um, I'm a relatively cool guy every once in a while. So um, but that's all. You know, it's just about trying to educate them.